Hi everyone, Neil Snape and I'm back to make a quick tutorial on how to apply presets in various modules like library module, develop module, how to use auto sync, how to turn it off, how to um, apply to congruent and non-congruent images and actually even save it out as a preset so that when you import images you can apply it as a develop preset. So let's take a look at the images that we have in front of us and you can see that most of them have been modified somewhat. The badges are in the corners, it depends on your preferences. They tell you what have been changed in any ver various uh, set of images. So in this case, I see three badges on the image that we're going to process, and that means that I've already previously modified it. Other images, it depends. When you're importing images into modern, the latest versions of Lightroom, they actually use the um, uh, embedded preview for efficiency reasons. So since I shoot with a black and white preview, that's what's embedded as a J JPEG into the actual raw images. As soon as you click on the develop module, they will turn into a, a develop preview, which turns it back into the raw image that it is, which is color until you choose to turn it to black and white again. So let's go into the develop module directly from here. And you can see the image is already looking good, but that's because I previously modified it. So let's just hit the reset button and you'll see the raw image as it was shot. Shot with daylight coming through double pane glass, which actually adds a lot of green to the image. Now I could have used a gray balance on, a, on what we call a white or gray, uh, gray balance card. I could have used the X-Rite Passport color checker to make a profile and any of the various tools would actually apply your white balance to those images. Now I can click in the eyedropper and click anywhere in the image and it will turn that to a gray. I can click on the wall but you have to know that the white paint on the wall is not necessarily gray so it really depends what it's going to look like. So I just clicked on it now and it's told it's telling me that it's got to add 15 in the tint, which is what I'm used to. Usually it's a tiniest little bit more. I could even go as far as 18, except it turned the getting a little bit yellowish color uh, paint. It's actually trying to bring it back to a blue and I don't really want that. So I'll take it back to the warmth that it was on the time it was shot. Thing around there would probably be good. Other things you might want to change in the image is we might take up the exposure a little bit maybe a little bit in the highlights and even whites you might take it up a little bit i would say we can take down vibrance just a slightest bit in saturation too make it not look too oversaturated and it will add as i often do a tiniest bit i will turn up the saturation a lot in the shadows just to see wh what color I'm actually adding and it will take this over until I have the color that I want to add. It might be around there. So then I'll take it back down again to probably around until it looks right. We'll actually even change the balance. And if I'm happy with the image, I think it looks pretty good the way it is. Personally, I would modify the image more. I would brighten maybe a little bit in the eyes and shape the image, what we call dodge and burn. But that's for another time. I've already done lots of YouTube videos on doing that uh, previously, so you can take a look at those later. So if you want to add this as a preset, you can go to your left column, and it's marked with the plus sign, create preset, or you can use the shortcut command shift N for new preset, and I will have to give it a different name because I previously saved it out. Color 2. You can check and uncheck anything that you want to that you don't want to be saved into your preset to be applied at different times. So I can say check none or none or check all. And I will take out graduated filters and radio filters because those ones, if they were applied as a preset, would apply it in a certain position wherever you created it to all of the images that you're going to apply this preset to. So usually we leave out graduated filters and radial filters, but not always. If you do landscapes, then probably your graduated filters then would be applied to a certain set of images and that would be fine to do so. 
So I can say save it in user presets or I could even give it a different place. So now it's created and it's there. That's saved in all of the settings that I have done. While you're in the develop module, it's really easy then to apply that to other images. So if I command click on other images that I want to apply this, this setting to, non-congruent as well, you can see that the master image is the one with the highlight is a little bit wider around the border. So that's the master image that it's going to take all the information from. The other ones are selected because you can see they have a border and you can click double click on sync and it will pull up the same dialog box that we had before except it will have a few other settings which are local adjustments because those aren't saved out in the um, develop presets but they can be applied between images so I think we'll leave it where it is. We didn't change the crop. We didn't change anything else. So all of the settings that we had previously done when we synchronized now will be applied to all of the other selected images from the master image that's in front of you. So if you wanted to use auto sync, so this little tiny button that's just above the word sync, you turn that to auto sync and now if I change any of these settings, it will actually apply anything you change on the master image while the other ones are still selected with auto sync turned on. It will apply all of those settings to the other images at the same time. So that's auto sync. If you wanted to say just on the master image, then change one or two items that you didn't want to apply to all the other images, then you can just toggle that little button and it'll turn back to sync. And now when you change the master image, even though all of the other images are still selected, it will only apply to the master image. Let's take a look at how this is going to work in the library module. So I'm, I've already gone back to the grid, which is fine. Now that you can see that the other images now will have the second badge, which is, of course, the um, develop module that we applied to it with the color settings. So how can we apply these settings to other image in the grid module? So if I click on the border, it's going to unselect all the other images and only keep the front image. If we wanted to apply that to, say, this image, this image, and this image, we can't in the current version of Lightroom 2019, we can't actually apply user presets by right clicking, which we used to be able to do because they're not there anymore. But what we can do is use, I use a user shortcut and I'm sure there, there's actually a menu item somewhere. It's command shift S. Then you have your synchronized settings, which comes from the master image and it's going to apply those and from the develop module but it's pulling in all the develop module information in the library and it's actually going to apply whatever you choose to check or uncheck on this and when we hit synchronize it changes all of the selected images to exactly the same develop settings that you had done to the master image you can use the preset that you had previously saved, when you import your images, there is a develop setting and it will apply that develop setting in your user presets to uh, all incoming images that if you choose to do that. So that's about all there is to, to doing quick and efficient workflow using develop presets, changing, using autosync, using uh, various methods of applying them in the uh, both the library and develop module. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. You can give it a like. You can give me some comments and subscribe to my page if you so choose. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.